Crypto Jam performance is like being on Starship Enterprise. You have that big video screen there where the planets and the phaser cannons start whooshing at you. And then you have the control screens here, which actually control the action there. People come together and make music, or in our case, make music and picture playing together. That's the idea. That is something which has never done before, as far as I know. Everybody makes music with a computer. That is nothing new. The new thing is coming together and doing it together. As in the old ways, we have jazz jams, we have guitar jams, we have all types of jams, and we have laptop jams, using the computer to jam together. The difference between a laptop jam and a normal jam is you get people who bring a silver box, uh, and that box is filled with an infinite palette of sounds. be playing anything from Mozart to Van Halen to, which I just sampled, uh, nursery rhymes. So they show up with a gray box, they put it on the table, you have no clue what, what they're into, what style. You've got a guy that's been doing heavy metal samples for the last year and a half, next to a guy that spent the last two years writing a piece of software that makes nothing but ding, a dong, a ding, a dong. And then the the problem arises when you put these two people together. How the hell is that going to work? It's sort of formed a bit kind of a core team of laptop jammers who sort of attended regularly. That was John, who comes, who comes down on every single one. That is Simon, the visual guy. Then we have uh, Pendle, who just came on to the um, third one, I think, and still has been since then on each one of them. And uh, a bit later, from the big chill onwards, it was Craig and Haley, both audio visual. And um, we have, I think, we have the same ideas of how things should evolve. My name is Hayley and I'm from New Zealand. Um, I am living in Brighton, I have been for a little while. Um, I perform as a VJ under the name Superfly Sister along with uh, Random Effects um, and together we're Metaluna. We came to Brighton about a year ago. And basically the vibe is really great and we just really liked it and we enjoyed the, um, the company of the people we'd met. I came across the Laptop Jams um, when I saw a poster of theirs. It was just in the street in Brighton not long after we moved here and I, I got quite excited about it and ran home and was like, um, Craig, there's this cool Laptop Jams thing happening and um, we've got to go down, we've got to take our laptops and go and check it out. The reason I chose Hambry Arms is that it looked to me like an old Indian wedding hall. I didn't know it was actually a I didn't, pub, I didn't know anything about it. I thought, wow. It's quite ethereal, it's quite Star Trek-y, it's, it's, there's a, there's a great juxtaposition with the screens and this weird Indian ballroom. From the outside, it's an amazing building. And I just walked by and I thought, now that, that's the place to do it. The actual laptop jam at the Hanbury Barroom, when you, when you walk in, it's quite a massive room. And the focal point is the video screen and everyone's little laptop screens. My main function on the laptop jam night is overviewing the webcast. You have audio, you have sound, and you have visual that gets filmed and then streamed over the internet 
basically everybody can see, can watch, can listen, which makes it very universal. Sort of brings it brings it to a different level. The Hamby Arms works very well for a laptop space because everything's on the same level. It's generated a space where people feel that, you know, it's their space, they can come in, do things with us. It's quite different to uh, a traditional improvised space where you sit and watch. Uh, it's a very open environment, so anyone can, can step up to the plate, as it were, and, and put work up. My father had taken hold of a Super 8 film in the 70s and he still had lots of it lying around. Um, I realised that you know, the film has a quality that is really hard to get. Generally the weeknights are spent um, sitting at home watching um, Super 8 film and uh, into the late sort of wee hours of the morning. Um, especially before a gig where you're trying to find new footage, you know. Yeah. <laughs> This is the camera that I bought to, uh, to go out filming. It's got quite a few nice extra features on it, uh, like I can leave it and run in, running on time lapse and uh, standard sort of filters in it that I tend to avoid because I like using uh, pure footage rather than uh, adulterated footage. Member in the laptop jams, and I've only done about two or three performances. So, but yeah, definitely the people are really nice, and I've kind of gotten to know some of them. Every museum we make his own list according to his knowledge. I use my camera a lot doing um, filming my things and so on, and I use sometimes effects while I'm filming, but. Since I have an editing software now, I sometimes just do the effects afterwards, but sometimes you just need the effect while you're filming so you know what you're doing. I use a lot of uh, very, very simple graphics, and I've found that um, you can give a lot of form and content by having the very busy movement captured in, say, uh, just a pure white stripe that's moving up and down the screen and it mixes well with the busy movement that I've taken on the camera. I did actually film my nipple. Uh, I was modelling actually and we had to wear these nipple plasters so they wouldn't see through the clothes and, um, and I found it very interesting when I was taking them off how it all formed them. <laughs> goes like back and forth in, in uh, rhythm with the music, so it's quite interesting. And then when it like also goes off, it kind of bounces a bit. It's quite funny. The 16mm film that we use um, has come from a few sources in London usually, um, either markets or um, people selling 16mm film. And it was really a lottery because you couldn't look at it before you um, purchased it, so you just buy something that looked or sounded actually interesting by the label. We hadn't actually ever seen the f footage we were using because we'd only just got it from the market that day. And, um, so we were, we were just really surprised by what we were seeing, let alone what anyone else was seeing. <laughs> and, uh, and at one stage it got kind of risque and we were, um, it, just, it was hilarious because we didn't know where it was going to go. Uh, well, I'm planning to use uh, some material off the West Pier in the next Laptop Jams in the ICA.
I think is kind of a big landmark here in Brighton and uh, and it's very special to me that it has kind of fallen apart while I was here. But I really think it's beautiful like this. I don't know, some people don't think so, but I think it's absolutely amazing and very spooky. We're always basically capturing new footage to use. Um, so it's just a continual process of capturing new, new footage, interesting things. Once you've um, got it on DV, you can import it into your editing software on, your, on the computer. And then um, cut it up into the loops that you want, um, put on any effects that you think you know, would be suitable. Um, so it's a combination of, of both doing things live in the way of adding effects and also thinking about what will work beforehand and making loops that you specifically have worked on. Taking laptop jams to the ICA was really exciting for all of us, I think, because uh, although it was really good at doing it in Brighton, the amount of exposure we were getting is, is much more limited. And so ICA um, gave us the potential to have a lot more exposure and I think get people along who, um, who are maybe more interested in the experimental nature of what we were doing. <laughs> Yeah, the ICA was was quite different from the Hanbury Ballroom. While um, Hanbury Ballroom is kind of like very local and easygoing, and like being in London and like doing my first visual jam, then so it was all like whoa. Um, it had its moments. It was a funny one. A little bit difficult to hear what you're doing and with other people and that, but you know, that's jamming. It's okay. I mean, sometimes uh, things are pumping, you get a real kick out of it. Sometimes it's just good to, on the slower jams, just to contemplate what's happening. Uh, and sometimes I'm having technical nightmares. I like working with the laptop jam ensemble. I like working within that process of like there's more than one computer musician. You don't know, we don't rehearse beforehand, don't even know it's gonna turn up uh, most of the time. So it's always an open book, it's, a, it's an evolving thing. They come from their bedroom, where they do everything by themselves. As a kind of bedroom 
musician, you, you can very easily get involved in, the, in, in this situation where it's just you and your room together and your gadgetry. I mean, in a way, it's, it, it, there is very much this kind of boys' toys thing where boys do like sitting around fiddling with stuff, and any justification for doing that is fantastic. And in a way, that's why Laptop Jams is good, because it moves it beyond the, the merely um, technological masturbatory concept, which it um, may or may not be anyway. I mean, sitting in your bloody bedroom and doing, doing it all the time on your own is lonely. You get lonely. I've done it for so many years and I hate it. I just want to do things together with other people. Part of being a musician is, is the interplay with other musicians. What Laptop Jams has enabled myself and, and many other people to do is actually um, be a musician again with other musicians. Um, in, you know, in, albeit in a kind of non-traditional way, and I think that's what's one of the most interesting things about the whole situation. Um, you know, I'm not strapping on a guitar, which, but I'm strapping on a laptop instead. And I think one of the things that comes out of laptop jams is that it's it's not necessarily about the technology; it's about musicianship. For me, it's it's viable to to play with other musicians, and that is what we that what that is what we facilitate. That's what we create a jam playing together, so um, for me it's important to grab people, to get the people out of their bedroom. Yeah. It brings people out, it gets people communicating musically together, playing together, thinking together as a band, even though they're using their computers, and it brings a bit of that old traditional musical empathy and understanding back into like a 21st century environment. Fear of the loss of love of someone, fear of the loss of liberty, fear of old age, and fear of death. And second, uh, flexibility. That is to say the ability to unbend mentally and physically and to adapt oneself to any circumstance or environment without loss of self-control or composure. Flexibility is a trait of the extrovert, a person who can and does take a keen interest in and expresses himself on behalf of the Before a performance, you usually feel very um, nervous and re more probably worried that um, the people there won't like it, they won't understand what we're trying to achieve. If I'm not nervous before performances, it's, it usually means something bad is going to happen. <laughs> Before you go on, rather than being kind of stage fraught, um, it's more a case of kind of being slightly concerned about getting everything set up correctly and the kind of smooth running of the thing. When you first start performing, you need to say, OK, is, it, is the song going slow or is it going fast? And you have to sync the movements up, kind of. Uh, but then again, like, the music might change at any point, and, which you don't know. Laptops are, they're like a palette. It can be whatever you want them to be. So what I like about it is the fact the element of surprise, not knowing what's going to come next. You never know what's going to happen really, it's uh, completely unexpected, it makes you really work on your toes, uh, the music can swing in any direction. You know, the fact that you're, you're dumped in a situation, you have to respond to it, that's what I like about improvisation, and creating something out of just the smallest elements, and you know, I love the way it grows and develops. To actually to go out and, and, and put yourself on the line, I think, is, is it feels a bit, you know, risky, I suppose. Not many people know how to jam. A good laptop jam performance is when it clicks, you can feel that. When it clicks between the audio people and the pictures have some sort of meaning.
if you're getting really positive feedback and people are interested in what you're doing and they're you know, asking questions and actually getting involved with it on some level, then I think that really helps me. Usually it's, um, it's sounds within the music which uh, are represented by the visuals and they might not necessarily be um, the actual uh, the sounds you would normally expect to hear with those, with what you're seeing. But it works, some things work really well and when that happens, um, th the audience, I think, can appreciate that you've um, you've created something that uh, was not rehearsed or not pre-edited um, and you had no way of trying it out beforehand. It, it just sp it's spontaneous and you know that's what's exciting about laptop jams. <laughs> When you come off, it's, it's usually with mixed emotions, often you just don't want to leave and you're quite happy going now and it seems unfair that you have to, to get off and sometimes you can't wait to get off because it's been going so badly and you're kind of potentially embarrassing yourself. After the performance, I always feel quite elated that um, that we've, because I, I, I always think of it as being an accomplishment of what we've done, that we've actually managed to um, create something that's really amazing because it is so spontaneous and people, are, you know, we, we are just doing it on the fly, you know, lots of it. It's nice to kind of feel that part of something that's kind of working and if you can see an audience kind of enjoying it, then it's kind of good. Good feeling to walk off and feel that you've been a part of that, definitely. We have had magic moments where it just felt that this is right. The music and the picture there, that is all felt, suddenly it all felt into place. And that's brilliant, that's great. That's a good performance. That's a good laptop jam performance when it happens. <laughs>